It is rare to have two movies about the same story coming out very close to each other, but when it happens, it gives us a great chance to compare and analyze them. Disney's 2016 Jungle Book and the 2018 Mowgli movie from Netflix both have some amazing CGI in them, but I'm keen to find out which one did a better job at designing the animal characters. And let's get started straight away with uh, a favorite character, Baloo, the bear. And the way I'm going to do this comparison is to show you guys on the left side some animal references. Then we have Jungle Book in the middle and then Mowgli on the right side. My aim is to be able to define and highlight the differences between the character designs and also the unique features or unique uh, decisions that they made when they designed them. So as an overarching difference between the two films is that with Jungle Book, we have more realistic animals, or even though they still talk and sing in this case, um, they still look more like real animals. While Mowgli is an interesting hybrid of human characteristics, especially on the face, and animal features. So in this case with the bear, we can see that comparing to the original animal's head, we have very similar proportions. So starting with small eyes, that's very crucial. So compared to the size of the head, the eyes are tiny and they are actually quite close to each other as well. So close sitting eyes, you can see here as well, like compared to the size of the head, which is, let's say this width, let me just do this straight that is roughly the width of the head. Within that, we have roughly the halfway here. Within that, I would say the eyes sit within the central third of the full width of the head. So that is very close compared to like a human face, where this width is roughly half. So our head would come down here. Let me just draw it quickly, something like that. But obviously, because we are talking about an animal, the proportions will be completely different. Now, in Mowgli, this is, as you can see, closer to a human's face already, just by looking at the eyes. First of all, the eyes are way bigger. So compared to the other design in Jungle Book, here we have roughly, let's say, if this is the eye here, if I put a Jungle Book next to it, it would be something like that size. So not only the size, but also the shape of the eye is more human-like. Let me just zoom a little bit closer. I intentionally have higher resolution images here so I can show it to you closer. Immediately we can see that it's much more human-like. And not only the eyes, but also the surrounding, like the socket of the eye, we have actually eyelids here visible. Now, of course, eyelids are visible also on the other example, but it's more covered in fur, just like in the original animal reference. There are eyelids, but they are completely covered in fur, so it's not as defined as with the example with Mowgli. You probably notice that the whole face so I would say roughly this area is completely barren. There's no fur on it. So it's almost like a bald bear. And I think the main reason for that was because they wanted to show all the features that can help to create a more human-like face, including the wrinkles. So we have a lot of wrinkles here and we have these bags under the eye and the eyelid. Then we have also all kinds of different things like scars, which obviously shows better again without the fur. This is an interesting design decision. Having a bald bear shows that it's very scruffy and it went through a lot um, and maybe even the fur came off because all the fights that Baloo was involved in but um, still it makes it a little bit strange. Although I love all the different uh, distortions or deformations of the face, like the nose, which has a tilt on it, and then also the lips that are falling down on the right side. So as you can see, the nose is broken like a boxer's nose. There's a big scar here on the eye, like Geralt from Witcher. 
And there's also another big scar here on the right side. It's quite complex. And even the eyes are not similar. So on the left and the right, this is not as open as the one on the left side. So a lot of differences between the two sides as well. And that's normal, of course, like even us, we don't have a completely symmetrical face. But this is very exaggerated here in the Mowgli version of Baloo. So Andy Serkis said when we headed into this movie, I really didn't want to use documentary style, photoreal animals that you would never believe voice would come out of. Part of the design of the animals was to license them so that you can actually see facial expressions that made human vowel sounds because these are animals that represent humans. I purposefully wanted all of the eyes of the animals to look as human as possible. I would say that definitely worked out because if we cover the rest of the face, this eye would look very human-like. So if we compare the eyes from the original references to Jungle Book and Mowgli, Jungle Book is almost like a transition. So even Mowgli is not 100% like a human's eye, but it is very close to it. And Jungle Book is halfway in between, so it's close to the animal reference, but starting to look a bit more human. But let's take a look at another interesting character, Bagheera. Now with him, who was played by Christian Bale in the new version in Mowgli, we can again see the same exact traits. So I'm not going to repeat what I already said. Instead, let's just do a couple of notes here as well and look closer first at the animal references. So with Black Panthers, we can see clearly that the proportions are completely different from a bear's head. We have much larger and open eyes, big whiskers all around, and the shape of the skull can be simplified by continuing a line from the top of the head all the way to the nose. So it's almost flat here at the front, which makes it interesting and unique. So when we look at the examples, first let's start with Jungle Book. So this is the version there. We have a very similar facial structure, but to make it a bit more approachable and friendly looking, the ears were made larger. Also, the shape of the eye is again slightly more human-like instead of more round shapes as on the original animal references. And the nose is way bigger again compared to the original references that we can see here, almost twice as big. Now, when you exaggerate features like the nose and the ears, it starts to look a bit more like a young animal. So like the cub in this case. And whenever we see a cub or a small animal, they always find it more cute. So exaggerating the scale of these features will eventually make the animal more approachable, more friendly. So that was the decision there, but it still looks very similar. So the proportions are close. The skull is very similar. We can see the same line or shape here. And compared to this, when we look at the other version, so the version from Mowgli, especially when we look at this example here, we can see that it's almost exactly like Christian Bale's face blended into a black panther somehow. The most human-like features are the eyes, but also the eyebrows are very distinguishable and noticeable here. Now, you don't see eyebrows in the Jungle Book version or on the original references. So that is definitely making it more like a human. And the main reason that we see eyebrows here is again to be able to create more human-like expressions. So we can see the eyebrows when they are coming down, um, the character looks more angry, or here as well we can see the eyebrows. And then when there's a smile, they are going higher and more curved. And even the shape of the nose is different or unique, I would say. So we can see how straight it is on both examples here as well. We have an almost human-like nose compared to a much wider nose, both on the animal references and in the Jungle Book version. So simple proportional changes can make a huge difference and it can create a completely different feel. 
So if you look at this example here on the right, uh, the picture of Christian Bale, you can see that, of course, motion capture was used, which Andy Serkis is very famous for, who was the director of this film. But if you're not familiar with him, he was Gollum or King Kong or Caesar in Planet of the Apes. And he's doing always an amazing job, both directing and acting. And the performance capture relies on two components. First, it's the data from the 3D capture dots in 360 degrees. And then second, it's the witness cameras, which are multiple cameras placed around the actor's face to read the performance. So then the animators will be able to use and combine these two references to create the final result. So let's move on to the next character before we further analyze their approach. So the wolves. I think this is where, again, it's very noticeable, the difference between the more realistic approach in Jungle Book and the more human-like version in Mowgli. I read some reviews and people mainly pointed out the wolves not being realistic or fake looking. And I have to agree that while Bagheera and Baloo, I think, are interesting, still slightly weird, when we look at the wolves, they look a bit too off. I think it's mainly because they try to pull off so many different things at once in one character design. They want to make them look more human, but also still like an animal. They want to make sure that they look friendly and approachable, especially characters like Akila, the leader of the pack, but also uh, make them look more scruffy and uh, battle hardened. So all of these different things together, maybe just a mixture of all of this makes it look weird. And I would say that he is still the best character from the wolves in this film. So his design is actually not too bad. Um, but if you look at these younger wolves, their heads or faces look very odd in comparison in the other film to a design which resembles a wolf beautifully. And I understand that in Mowgli, they try to use the human anatomy blended into the animal to help them be able to talk and behave like a human. But somehow in Jungle Book, they managed to do that without losing the animalistic features. So was it really necessary to push it this far in Mowgli, this blend of animal and human features? The CGI in Jungle Book was created by the Moving Picture Company, or MPC, and the director was John Favreau. But Peter Bailey said it the best, I think, who was one of the animation supervisors. She said, One of the biggest creative challenges of the film for us was having talking animals that looked real and finding that correct balance that would make it believable. The voice acting gave us our first clues for the performance, but also we used things like the character's physical limitations. It's really a delicate balance to make sure that we never did anything the real animal couldn't possibly do. While in Mowgli, they try to influence the whole design with the human anatomy, especially on the face. In Jungle Book, they try to make sure that they can talk, but really pay attention to all the limitations of the animal anatomy. So they stayed more true to that. So this can be also another reason why the characters in Mowgli look more weird, because we have a more human-like head, but still a very animalistic body. And whenever you create any type of hybrids, it is very difficult to pull it off. But let's move on to our next character. So Ka is another one that I selected to have a closer look at because here again, we can see clearly the difference that we already talked about. Once again, on the references on the left side, we see the proportions of all kinds of different snakes. And then we see in Jungle Book that I think they've done a brilliant job at capturing those very scary looking eyes very reptile-like, but still they manage to make the character talk and um, act and uh, do all kinds of different things. In Mowgli, they went with, again, their approach of having human characteristics, and in this case, very feminine characteristics. So we have these curvy eyes and also almost like lips. If you draw these over here, you look like 
really like a, a woman's lips even here you can see the same thing so very feminine also we have eyebrows looking very strange on a reptile or a snake and another thing that is very obvious when you compare these two images here is the placement of the eye so not only the scale and uh, the proportion within the face but also the position of the eye is important because you can see with the snakes if I zoom a little bit closer here their eyes are definitely not on the front the eyes are on the side so are sitting here on the side now in jungle book that's almost perfectly follows that rule so we have the eyes on the side maybe slightly bend more closer towards us but still on the side and uh, in Mowgli again just resembling more a human's face and anatomy we have the eyes front facing so that's also making it very weird I don't think there's any snakes out there that would have eyes as close to each other and on the front of the face instead of being on the sides. So from all the characters I actually feel like Ka's design is the weakest. Again this is personal preference I'm not saying that the CGI is bad because obviously it's done really well at the motion capture and all that so I find the Jungle Book design much more appealing because it's more like a snake the way I think of snakes and it has that hypnotic look that is very important in the story again this is trying to resemble more the animation while in the uh, Mowgli version they tried to base it more on the original book from Kipling again you can argue which one is better or worse and last but not least my favorite character from this story is definitely Shere Khan the tiger and here I just love the Jungle Book version it was Idris Elba who played this character in Jungle Book and Benedict Cumberbatch in Mowgli so two amazing actors and their performance was brilliant but the character design again I feel was much more successful in Jungle Book not just because it resembles more the original animal anatomy but also because they managed to blend those fine details and tiger-like behaviors with the acting and the lines that were recorded by the actor another important thing that we know that Shere Khan was injured when he killed the parents of Mowgli and in the Jungle Book version we can clearly see that on the uh, damaged eye and the burnt skin here so these are very obvious scarring on the face while with the version in Mowgli we have the injury on the leg which is not as obvious and not visible all the time and even when it's visible it's a bit weird but another the reason why I feel this new version of Shere Khan in Mowgli is not as good is because the head is just too big so in proportions the head to the body doesn't feel right it just feels like a cartoon character it's just huge massive head of course we can't see the full body here and there is perspective and foreshortening but still I noticed that throughout the whole film I always felt like the head was just really big compared to the body it makes it feel clumsy or just just again odd while here we can see it's the same pose when we look at these images next to each other but we have a much better proportion of the head and the body together and especially with this character I feel like making the eyes so big doesn't actually achieve what the character is about the evilness and the, the scary look once again the smaller eyes and especially this damaged eye here does a much better job at that I actually recently attended a lecture by the animators at MPC and they shared a lot of interesting things including how deep simulation works with these type of characters for realism they not only simulate the bones and the muscles on them but they also have a separate simulation for the fat in the body the blood veins and then the skin and the fur on top of that so lots of layers simulated together and separately to create that very realistic looking final result 
They also explained that in CGI, they use the bones to move the muscles. So when they do these 3D models, they create the bones and then the bones will start to move the muscles, while in real life, that's actually the opposite. So they call this inverse biomechanics for the simulation because it's just easier to do it that way. They are modeling the bones and then the bones will be moving around uh, the rest of the body, including the muscles. It's also called rigging the body. And they also explain that it is very important to do comparative anatomy, which means that you're not only looking at the references of that certain animal that you are simulating, but also different animals like other felines or even all kinds of other animals, maybe even horses, just to be able to define those unique characteristics that will help to make it look real. We would love to know which characters do you prefer and why, so please do leave a comment below. Click on the link in the description and become a member if you want to discuss topics like this with us live and take part in monthly creative challenges. Thanks a lot for watching, like and share this video if you enjoyed it. And as always, have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.